All right, so today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new DJI Mic 2 system. Now, I've been using this for the past 30 days, both professionally and recreationally. And I gotta say, I'm pretty freaking impressed with the overall quality of these mics. And I'm gonna go through performance, build quality, and the audio quality in this video. So let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo, and today we're gonna do our first impressions of the DJI Mic 2. And we're gonna start this video off by talking about the new hardware changes on the Mic 2. And to do this, I decided to use the DJI Mic 1 so you can get a good idea of what the audio sounds like right now as we're using this and talking about the new hardware. I am using the DJI Mic Lav, which we'll take a closer look at later in this video, but this should be a good baseline for what you can expect as far as audio quality improvements as you listen to this video. And if you're curious as to what mic I am using, just look at the lower right hand corner of this video and that will tell you all the information you need to know. All right, let's take a look at this hardware. All right, so opening this up, it's a clamshell design, very similar to what comes with the Osmo Pocket 3. Inside, you will get a 3.5 millimeter jack. You will get two windscreens. We'll talk more about these windscreens because I think the design of these is actually pretty genius. And then of course, you will get your charging case. There is also a USB-C to USB-A cable, but we won't talk about that right now because it's, it's just a cable. The new charging case has been completely redesigned and it is an absolute beast. It feels very, very heavy in the hand. I, I just, you have to pick this up to really understand what I'm talking about, but hopefully when you receive your mic, you'll agree with me, this thing feels so incredibly durable. The case now has a lasp or a latch, lasp, latch. Anyways, it locks when it closes, which is great because the previous case used to just have this magnetic piece and I never felt like the magnetic did a really great job of keeping the case closed and I would find my mics laying in my back seat. So it's nice to see that they have a physical lock on this now. We also have four status LEDs. This will indicate your charge and your charging status. On the back side, we do have a USB-C connector. That'll be for firmware and charging. On the bottom, there's really nothing but some sort of soft nub. So if you set it down on a desk, it's not going to slide anywhere. It's pretty nice little touch that they added to this. Opening up the charging case, you'll be greeted with the two transmitters and the receiver. The transmitters are the same as they were on the Osmo Pocket 3. You do get two transmitters. These are the gray slash black version. If you're interested, DJI is going to be offering a white version. I believe they're calling it Glacier White. Not 100% sure on that, but there will be a white version of these. I definitely plan on picking those up because I'm a big fan of, of white and it's great on certain contrasts. On the back side, we still get those great magnets. And actually, if you could believe it, they made these magnets even stronger than the purse generation, which is going to work fantastic if you're dealing with sweaters or thicker clothing. These will work great. You get one record button, a bind button, and a power button on the opposite side. And of course, you get the USB-C port. Once again, the firmware will need to be manually loaded to the microphones. This does not work via the DJI MIMO app, so if you're going to update these, firmware has to be loaded directly to the microphone itself. If that should ever happen to change, I will update the description of this video with that pertinent information. Connecting your windscreen is easier than ever. This utilizes that 3.5 millimeter jack. Just simply push the windscreen down inside, clip it, and that's it. This is so genius. I cannot believe nobody else has done something similar like this. This is just super smart. It's a lot less fiddly than the Rode system or the Mic 1s when it comes to applying the windscreen. I absolutely love this. All right, let's talk about the improvements made to the DJI receiver. So the old receiver, there was nothing wrong with it. It worked fantastic. However, I had two major complaints. Number one, the touchscreen was a little bit fiddly to access and make changes. So DJI did add a jog wheel, which allows me to adjust the gains, adjust volume directly from the jog wheel, and you can make manual selections just like so, which I think is fantastic. The other complaint I had had to do with the hot shoe adapter. The hot shoe adapter would always break or pull out when I was taking it off the camera, and a couple of times I've actually lost it, and that's what prompted me to make the beast clip, 
which was a replacement clip for the DJI receiver. Now that problem is gone. This is a fixed clip. Shouldn't come out, shouldn't break, shouldn't disappear on you, which is really fantastic. So it's nice to see that DJI's made subtle improvements that add up big in the overall use. On the back side, we still have the charging port. And of course, you can still access those accessories from the back side here. It has a very similar cover to what was on the original DJI mic, but now it's just for the accessories and does not double as a hot shoe mount. There's also a USB-C cable port here as well, which again, that will be for charging and firmware updates if you wanted to charge these individually. But overall, very minimal but clean design on the new receiver. All right, so now that we've gotten a chance to see the new hardware, let's talk about the battery life of these devices. On a single transmitter, you can get up to six hours of battery life. If you combine that with the charging case, you get a combined usage of over 18 hours of battery life, which I think is pretty damn impressive. And from everything I've researched, it's pretty much the best in class battery life of any wireless lab system that I have seen. Pretty damn cool, which means you'll be doing a lot more filming and a lot less charging. All right, so now we're gonna get into the audio test. Now I'm recording right now into the DJI Mic 2, but I also have the DJI Mic 1 on my chest as well. Now I'm recording into both of these internal storages so you can sort of get an idea and understanding of what the sound is like from each of these. Now one benefit of the Mic 2 that they have is now 32-bit internal recording. Now that 32-bit recording is incredible because it gives you basically raw audio capabilities. And if you're not familiar with what 32-bit float actually is, I'll put it in a comparison that maybe some of you can understand. Have you ever taken a photo and tried to essentially recover some of the highlights or maybe some of the shadows and couldn't because it was a JPEG? But if you shot in RAW, you'll find you had way more dynamic range and way more flexibility. That's the equivalent to 32-bit float. If you find that your talent may be too loud or too soft, you can easily raise the levels without causing too much harm to the audio. It makes it a lot easier for professionals to reel back or dial back the intensity of the audio if it tends to clip. All right, so now you're hearing the audio from the new DJI Mic 2 along with the lavalier mic that DJI is offering with these new mics. Now this is a separate purchase for this lavalier mic. I highly recommend it because the audio quality, at least from my testing over the past couple of weeks with clients, it has been really, really good. I feel like it gives a nice little fullness to the voice, which was something that I always complained about from the Rode wireless lav mics or the Rode lav, is that it just sounded tinny or flat. There wasn't a lot of uh, soul to the voice. And I feel like this does a really good job with multiple types of voices. Now, one thing about audio, just like video, is that a lot of what you hear is going to be subjective. So what sounds good to me may not sound good to you. So only you will have to be the judge of whether or not this sounds good. Personally, I do like the lav mic. I think it isolates some of the noise that's surrounding me. But overall, I feel like the lav mic is a nice option and definitely a great add-on. And I can highly recommend it. It's just good to have a lav mic anyways. It keeps the mic a little bit more inconspicuous, essentially. All right, so now I'm testing the audio in a very direct nature. One thing that drives me nuts all over YouTube and Instagram is people are hand-holding these lavalier mics without actually having a handle. This is terrible for audio because as your finger moves, it will transmit noise and vibrations into the microphone. So anything you can do to keep your hand or your fingers or anything away from the audio source is really important. That's why we came up with these. These are the Dobo Magnum XL microphones. Don't judge the name because we had to, had to figure out a way to differentiate this. But this is an easy way where you can do interview style shots, but also keep your audio as clean as possible. And of course, they come with a nice little flag so you can display your logos. And yeah, it just makes branding purposes really, really nice. But how does the audio sound like this? Personally, I think this is the best sounding audio when you get the mic nice and close to your mouth. And it, it, just, it just sounds so professional. Alrighty, for this next test, I want to go ahead and show you what the AI noise reduction does on the DJI mic. So this has an AI noise reduction built in. 
and it's something super simple that you can just toggle on or off as you need it. I would use it in certain situations. In my office, it's a great place to use it because we have an AC running, there's a refrigerator over there. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be quiet, let you hear the noise floor in the studio. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the camera. We're gonna turn on the AI noise reduction. All right, so now the AI noise reduction is turned on. So now I'm gonna sit here, be quiet a little bit, let you hear the noise floor in the studio. Hopefully that sounds good, but let me know what you think of the sound. In my testing over the past couple of weeks, I had mixed results with the AI noise reduction. I still found it best to just use the 32-bit float. So again, you can still record internally, use that AI noise reduction as well. Yes, it is applied to that internal audio processing, but again, you will also have a lot more flexibility to adjust it as need be. Again, I personally, from, from my experience, I don't like to use any sort of noise reduction. I just like to process my audio in post, but I get it if you're looking for a quick pace, fast turnaround time, then using the AI noise reduction that's built into the mic system may be your best option for faster turnaround times. All right, let's talk about the range of these mics. Now I'm in the backyard right now and I am coming inside here and Nick's a good solid still, I wanna say 40, 50 feet away from me and we just went through a very thick steel door and I gotta say, I'm still very impressed with the range. Many mic systems would have transmission issues trying to penetrate through a house, but not these mics. All right, so let's talk about the range. And yes, I'm going back to my Magnum XL because it's gonna give me the best possible sounding audio. I really like the way this, this sounds when it's very directional. But the old mic system I thought had some of the best range already on a wireless mic system, but the new mic system gets 850 feet of, of range, which is pretty good. Now I did put it through the test in some houses and with talent at a distance. And I did notice for the most part, it did a fantastic job. There was only a handful of times where I started getting a little bit of garble when I started putting structure after structure in between me. But rest assured, you will definitely find that in most situations, the penetration and the overall range of these mic systems is pretty damn good and probably the best on the market right now, if I had to say. All right, let me go ahead and wrap this video up and give you some closing thoughts. Alrighty, so in closing, my overall thoughts on the DJI Mic 2 is this. I think that this is a fantastic upgrade. They didn't have to reinvent the wheel to make this awesome. They just had to fix a couple of minor things that I felt could have been better on the first generation. They fixed the hot shoe mount. They added a jog wheel. They gave us better range and 32-bit float inside. And if I didn't make mention of it already, the battery life is far superior of the original mic. And then we also get that 14 hours of internal recording, which I think is huge. I never really found an issue with the first generation when it came to internal recording, but it's nice to know that I have the flexibility to record almost as much as I want and never have to worry about running out of storage. So all in all, I think they did a good job. They added the things that we needed in the right places to make this a substantial upgrade. Now the question is, is if you have the mic one, should you upgrade to the mic two? And my answer is yes. Anytime you get audio improvements, even if it's minuscule, audio is something that is so sensitive that the smallest changes can make the biggest differences. So yeah, I think that this is one instance where audio should be upgraded as better technology occurs. And in this instance, they definitely made the right changes to make it so much better than the previous generation. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you got any value out of it, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Stay original. They checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, you know, flexing on me. My attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my successes only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I want the money to the